This is the 5 minute guide to the Admiral Hipper class, heavy cruisers of the German Kriegsmarine. The Admiral Hipper class were one of the first Kriegsmarine units to be built fully under the control of the Nazi party. The Versailles Treaty had limited the German Navy, as we've already seen, but as well as the battleship tonnage restriction, cruisers were limited to 6,000 tons, which had resulted in the Konigsberg class. However, in the 1930s, the London Naval Treaty formally split heavy and light cruisers, along with the 10,000 ton upper limit on displacement, and in 1935 Hitler concluded the Anglo-German Naval Agreement, which, along with pulling out of the terms of Versailles, left the Kriegsmarine with 50,000 tons of heavy cruiser displacement to fill, or five ships. Shortly before the formal signing, the design for the Admiral Hipper class had been prepared, with the class running at three ships, Admiral Hipper, Blücher and Prinz Eugen. Two other ships, Seydlitz and Lutzau, were planned as effectively the German answer to the British town class, being Hipper-type hulls, but with four triple turrets carrying 5.9-inch guns. But by 1936 it was decided to build all five as heavy cruisers. As with the Deutschland class, the building process was a learning experience, and the first three ships were all of slightly different dimensions, with the last two being identical, but to a fourth set of dimensions that were slightly larger again. Capable of 32 knots, the armament of the ships consisted of four twin turrets equipped with 8-inch guns, with two turrets super-firing forward and a matching pair aft. The secondary battery had 12 dual-purpose 4.1-inch guns in twin mounts, with a dedicated anti-aircraft armament of 12 37mm and 8 20mm guns. Wartime service would see a variety of additional 40mm and 20mm guns added to the ships in service for a variety of numbers often with a 37mm removed to make room. Finally, 12 torpedo tubes in four triple launchers were added, with two launchers per side, with one full reload of torpedoes carried as well as those in the tubes. A main belt of just over 3 inches thickness with a 2 inch deck provided some limited protection, and this all added up to a considerable displacement of between 16 and 17.5 thousand tonnes depending on the ship. It does raise questions about the efficiency of the design, similar to those surrounding the design of Bismarck. The ships were 60 to 70% over the displacement limit, yet compared with ships that were actually pretty much on the displacement limit, it's difficult to see where all this extra weight comes from. Compared to the British County class and the American New Orleans class, all three classes are about the same speed, and all have similar main batteries, although the New Orleans manages to get an extra gun in. In terms of secondary batteries, the New Orleans carries slightly fewer but larger dual-purpose guns and no torpedoes, while the counties carry a slightly lighter overall dual-purpose and anti-aircraft battery, but not by much, and they do carry eight torpedo tubes. So you might think that the overall greater number of secondary guns are the factor here, but both Allied ships are significantly more heavily armoured, which would more than balance that factor out. Overall, it seems to come down to the fact the hippers were about 20 metres longer than the other two, which would have extended the overall length the armour had to cover. As such, and similar to the Bismarck, whilst competitive with their treaty equivalents, there was certainly room for improvement in the efficiency of the design. The five ships were started between 1935 and 1937, and the first three would come into service in 1939 and 1940. Blücher had the shortest active career, pronounced ready for service on the 5th of April 1940, and at the bottom of the ocean three days later, thanks to the obsolete Norwegian Oskarborg fortress. A fortress so old, the Germans had written it off as unimportant, since of course it was used for training and manned by a commanding officer who was actually a pensioner, who'd retired 13 years ago, uh, in charge of a bunch of trainees. It was armed with whitehead torpedoes that predated the HMS Dreadnought, and similarly obsolete guns. It turned out, however, that this wasn't quite so toothless as it might appear, and the fortress sent the Blucher to the bottom with a pair of 11-inch shells, a bunch of uh, shells from their lighter guns, and a salvo of the obsolete torpedoes. The direct result was the temporary retreat of the German fleet, and the escape of the Norwegian government and gold reserves. I think that Blucher as a name for German ships is probably cursed. Seydlitz was almost complete in 1940 when work was paused, and in 1942 some genius decided to cut most of that away and try and make it into a light aircraft carrier called Versa. That went about as well as you'd expect, and the Soviets found her incomplete scuttled hull in 1945. 
Lutzow had even more fun. She was sold in 1940 to the Soviet Union, while still incomplete, and renamed Petra Pavlovsk. She would actually end up fighting against the Germans in defence of Leningrad until she was sunk by the Germans, then raised in 1942, renamed to Tallinn, and used to break the ongoing siege of Leningrad before being used as a floating barracks ship until being scrapped in the 1950s. The Admiral Hipper had marginally better luck surviving the invasion of Norway at the cost of being rammed by HMS Glowworm, which had been fighting a German destroyer. An attempt to commerce raid in the Atlantic failed when the engine oil caught fire. A second attempt was more successful in that they actually got into the Atlantic, then ended up attacking a convoy with a heavy escort, getting into a gunfight with the county class HMS Berwick, and falling back to France. A final raid was much more successful, sinking a number of ships before heading for Germany for repairs and then being deployed to Norway. After taking part in the abortive attack on convoy PQ-17, the next major action was the Battle of the Barents Sea, during an attempt to attack the convoy JW-51B. During this engagement with the ex-Deutschland, now Lutzau, Hipper engaged a pair of town-class cruisers and despite the overwhelming firepower advantage, ended up withdrawing with damage. This particular incident led to Hitler ordering the scrapping of the entire German surface fleet, and although most of this order was later rescinded, the Admiral Hipper was decommissioned and was eventually scuttled after being bombed in May 1945. The remaining ship, Prince Eugen, will be getting its own video, as it seems to have vampirically absorbed all the good fortune from the rest of the class. Going forward, I will be experimenting with the review of the week coming out at the regular time on Saturday. The dry dock will release on Sunday, and specials and other additional videos will go up on Wednesdays. Let me know what you think, or if you'd prefer a different upload schedule. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to tag your question with Q&A if you want to leave a question for the dry dock.